I'm so excited today to be with my friend, Renata Kelly Rippey. She is a hair and makeup artist in Washington, D.C., and she takes such excellent care of me. And she's going to try today <laughs> to teach me a little bit about her amazing talent with hair and makeup. And I think I am the most ineffective person with hair and makeup, <laughs> so she has a lot to teach me. Yeah, today we're just going to keep it really simple. Uh, so that when you're out and about or you're doing things on your own and you don't have me available, you can be able to qu uh, complete like a 15 minute look that's easy and that's on brand for you. So what I want you to do first is we've got to make sure that our skincare is, is on. So I'm going to have you apply some moisturizer. And what that'll do is that'll help keep the makeup on all day. So I'll have you go ahead and do that. Would you hand me yes. that, please? Thank <laughs> you so much. So this is SkinCeuticals triple lipid restore 242 and i got this when i was getting my eyebrows sculpted at erwin gomez's studio in washington dc and i don't have a lot of time for pampering myself and when i went in there to get my eyebrows sculpted he told me that my skin was very dry and he asked me what moisturizer i had put on that morning and I confessed I had not. <laughs> and so being an excellent entrepreneur and businessman, he made sure I did not leave his studio without having right. moisturizer. <laughs> and the weather's changing too, so you wanna make sure that you really beef up your, your moisturizer, any serum that you wanna use, you wanna make sure that you do that um, at night. And again, it's just, it's just gonna make the makeup stay on a lot, a lot uh, longer. So I like to start with eyes first, because I feel like, especially if you're going on TV or if you're having an event, um, you don't have to worry about messing up your foundation underneath. So I tell That's people, why you start with yeah, that. I always wondered that. Yeah, yeah. So you start with eyes, just in case if there's any fallout from the eyeshadow, you can just use your foundation and your concealer just to kind of clean that up. You don't have to start over. So I'm going to use the eyeshadow base. And one of the things that we learned while we were cleaning out your makeup bag is that you didn't have anything to put underneath for your eyeshadow to right. make it stick. I didn't even know there was such a yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to put a little bit of eyeshadow base on the lids. And you can apply it directly uh, with the wand. This is by Urban Decay. Um, but I'm going to put, put it on with the brush. And we're just going to put it right onto the lid. So I never put moisturizer on my eyelids. Is that correct? Yeah, you should because that area can get oh. really dry and can also look a little crepey. So you want to make sure that you put moisture on the lid and then also underneath. So I'm so glad we're going to have a video of this so that I will be able to remember all of these steps. Right. You can always look back on the right. video. Yeah. So I'm just going to brush that right onto the lid. And again, this is just so that our eyeshadow has something to stick to. And just blend that in. And don't my eyebrows look good? They do. He did, he did a great job. He did a really good job. He is very, very skilled. So I've been working with Gail for probably two years almost with you coming in and out of you know the, the news station. And I tend to always go cool, like uh, purples and like grays, but recently we did a branding shoot and we found out that the warm colors look really, really good on her. So I picked up this palette from Tarte and we've got some colors that you can use just one color on the lid. We've got some contour colors and we have like, if you wanted to do a smoky eye, we have some warmer browns that we can work with. So I found that it just really just warms up your whole look. So we're gonna try those today to see how. Yes, that and works. I have to tell on myself that you came and did a makeup clean out of my drawer. Yeah. <laughs> and I had so much stuff that I had purchased over the years. Mm -hmm. Just you go into Sephora and you buy stuff or you go yeah. to a makeup counter and you buy stuff and it was, a lot of it was wrong. And you've got a young daughter too who's <laughs> yes. really into, young girls now are really into YouTube and makeup yes and so a lot of the things that they wear we can't necessarily wear as we're getting you know more mature in age so we more want mature to, i love more that. mature <laughs> not old just more mature so we want to stay away from sparkly chunky glittery type of shadows and go more for matte and satin finishes just because they wear a lot better so um i'm gonna apply one color on the lid And what you want to do is pat it onto the eye. 
to build a product. And which brush are you using? I'm just that? using a, a synthetic flat brush. Okay. I'm going to have you turn a little bit towards the light. And you're just going to put it right on the lid. I was a, uh, a mortgage banker before. So I went from banking to beauty. Uh, during the bees. I, yeah, when I, I went through what I call my quarter life crisis when I was 28. Um, and was like, you know what, this, is, this isn't what I want to do for the rest of my life. And so my mom always wore makeup. My grandmother wore makeup. And uh, you know, when I was trying to find myself, I was like, what can I do that makes me really happy? And uh, I moved to DC, 2008. And that was it. That's amazing. Yeah. So it was really the influence of your mom and your grandmother. My mom and my grandma, yeah. And you still love what you do? I still love it, yeah. Every day it's different. I think that's what I love about it. You meet different people. Um, it's just been a great career. So what I'm going to do now is that we're going to create a crease, okay? And we're going to go right in the socket of the eye. We're going to kind of do like this windshield wiper motion. Okay. Gotcha. Like wax on, wax, wax off. off. Right. Wax on, and so we're just going to use the wrist to kind of apply it. Most people are kind of going here and you get a little wild and crazy with it. <laughs> right. So we just want to really control the motion and just kind of use our wrist and go right in the crease. And I'm going to use this color called latte right in the crease. And this is just to build a little definition in the eye. And is that the same brush or did you switch? This is a, um, a blending brush. A this blending is going to be brush. your best friend because this brush you can use a lot of different ways. You can use it um, on the eyes, you can use it underneath. Anywhere where you want to really blend and just make the look, re look really soft, this is where you can use this brush. Okay, So we're going to go right here in the crease. And this is where we're going to create a little definition. And do what I call that windshield white motion. Feels good. I always feel like when I'm getting my makeup applied in the chairs before an interview, that it's sort of a, a meditative moment. Like therapy? It is. <laughs> it really is. It, you just feel like you're being pampered and you're taken care of and you're putting on your armor before you go out. Mm -hmm. and I'm going to have you hold this because I want you to see where I'm applying the color. I'm going right here in the socket uh, of the yes. eye. And that's where we're creating our definition. Gotcha. Okay. So it's kind of like at a right, or a, how would you describe that angle? Mm, kind of like a C shape. Yeah, a C yeah, shape. Like a C shape. And I'm just going to take another brush that's clean and just blend that out. You're blending it upwards, not downwards. Mm -hmm. okay. Eyeshadow is all about blending. All right, so now I'm going to go on the other eye. And how do you do it symmetrically? Just practice. Just follow the shape of your eye. Yeah, and if you blend it out soft enough, it'll, it'll blend nicely. The thing about, even with your eyebrows, they don't have to match exactly, they just have to look very similar. Gotcha. And as long as you're blending it out and making it soft, you know, things will be good. It's only when you use the really dark colors and your lines are really harsh that you can really tell if it's not the same. That makes okay. sense. So now I'm gonna take a darker color and then I think I'm going to use this color Cozy. And I'm going to go right on the outer corner and kind of just do little swirls here just to kind of warm up that corner. And this is a different brush? This is a different brush. This is a shorter brush. It's still a, a blending brush, but the hairs are shorter. So we see the difference. You're going to oh, get yes. a lot more impact on this brush. So this is where you can like really get in there and build the color. And then afterwards, you can go over it just to use this as a blender, just to soften it. Okay, take a peek. I just want you to see where I'm putting the color. Oh, yes. Right there. Okay. And then I'm just going to blend that out.
just blend that out. Now I'm going to take that first color that we used, which was some more, and just go over the lid a little bit. And just blend these three colors together. So do you generally try to match the colors to the outfit, or is it more to the coloring of the person? More to the coloring of the person. If you have, like this palette, I feel like you can use for all outfits. The thing that you'll probably do is just switch out how you place the color or use like different color combinations. But I really don't, so like for you, you're wearing a blue dress, I would never put blue eyeshadow on you. Right. Yeah, so right, you just right. want to make sure that you're using something that just kind of complements you. So this particular palette, you can pretty much wear with everything. So no matchy-matchy. No matchy-matchy. <laughs> <laughs> no matchy-matchy. Now, what you could do, if you wanted to do like a really deep blue eyeliner on the bottom, mm. um, let's say if you don't have time for eyeshadow, you could just pop on like a really deep blue eyeliner on the bottom and the top and put on mascara and that could be a look. So it just depends on how much time you're working with. Right, so. right, right. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in your brows a little bit. <clears throat> and my favorite product right now is Benefit. They have these really awesome brow pencils. I love them because they have a lot of different color ranges. Um, I think they probably have like 15 colors. Wow. Um, so th there's something to match everybody. And I also like their, really, um, their brow gel. The brush is really tiny. So it really can get through the brush hair. Little tiny hairs. Yeah, do the hairs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush your brows upward. This is not your mother's makeup. <laughs> A lot more choice, variety. Yes, for sure. And like you said, colors. Like there are lots mm -hmm. of different colors. So to be able to have the variety of, yeah. you know, being able to choose things. Now your brows are perfectly groomed. So now we just want to fill them in a little bit. So the brows really frame the face. Um, they just really kind of bring everything together and people tend to forget about the brows. If you don't have time to take a pencil and fill them in, if you just take a little bit of brow gel and just run it through, that's also something that you could do if you don't have a lot of time. It's defined to me, but it doesn't, like yes. when I try to do it, I feel like I can see the pencil marks. Yeah, yeah. So that is so amazing. So what you want to do is just kind of flicker it where the natural hair is, mm -hmm. instead of like drawing it on. <laughs> right, yep. so flick. Mm -hmm. And then what you want to do is just take the brush on the end and just brush it through. Okay. Ah, uh, yes. So it just wow. like really just fills it in a little bit. And like I said, you, they did a great shape on your brows. So you just need a little bit of filling. I started doing TV interviews. I was talking to one of the hosts and I was telling the host that I was not very good at makeup. It was not really my thing. Mm -hmm. And his comment to me was, well, you could get your eyebrows to start with. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> like, Ooh, oh, amazing. okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> have really great content. You can be very well informed, but if you don't have the right presentation, yeah. a lot of your message is lost. It is lost. It could be distracting too, like if you're not pulled together and polished. Yes. People, you know, and then also everything is in HD and 4K. Right. And like you can really tell if someone isn't pulled together. So we want to create the least amount of distraction as possible. So I love that. That is our brows. See, take a look with a little bit of brow oh, gel. They look there. amazing. Wow. And it just warms them up a little bit, okay? And I'm going to take a little bit of eyeshadow, and I'm going to take this color here, Fireside. Fireside? Mm hmm with an angle brush. Now, this is our angle brush. We can use this for a lot of different things. We can use it to apply shadow. We can use it to do liner. We can use it to fill in our brows. So let's say you are without your pencil and without your brow gel. You can use um, like an eyeshadow that's kind of similar to your hair color and just kind of flick it through with the angle brush too. So this is another handy tool that you can use. It's a little bit of a MacGyver going yes. there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so look up to the ceiling for me and then I'm just gonna take a little bit of shadow and we're just gonna connect the top to the bottom. And that's on top of my lashes? 
This is kind of like a little bit underneath, like a little soft, smudgy look. Gotcha. The bottom lashes, and you just want to smudge it there. I feel like when I was in high school, we always put liner on like the the fleshy part of yes. the eye. Yes, and, and we I are going to do that. Yeah. So we're going to use an eyeliner. Oh, so both. Mm -hmm. We're going to do both. Mm -hmm. Especially for TV, you want to really add definition to the eyes. So what it does is just really pulls the eye look together. Okay? It really does. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you see how underneath we've got a little shadow from where we've been blending? Yes. If we had done our foundation and concealer first, we would have to like really clean that up. So that's why I like to do the eyes first. Smart. Okay? Smart. All right. So now I'm going to do a little bit of eyeliner and I'm going to rim it right in the waterline. That's what that's called, mm -hmm. the waterline. Yep, the gotcha. waterline, that, that fleshy part that you were talking about. <laughs> so I'm using a brown for you with your eye color. Browns are really good, dark blues, really deep plums. You could even do like a green. Again, if you don't have time for eyeshadow, the eyeliners are really good to use. Really quick and easy way to like really pump up your eyes. Okay, we'll look up. This is one of my favorite eyeliners because it's waterproof. Which is perfect for mm -hmm. people like me who wear contacts. Yes. You probably want to stay away from black unless you're doing like a black tie affair or something at night because it's going to really like intensify your eyes. So if you're, not, sort yeah, of level. if you're not used to wearing <laughs> makeup, using like a plum or brown is a good way to kind of transition into using eyeliner. Okay. All right. Blank it out. Oh, wow. All right. What I'm going to do now is add on some mascara before we add lashes. What is the philosophy of that? That's so that, because I feel like sometimes the lashes are put on and will you put more on afterwards? Or? Yeah, just to kind of merge ah, them together a ah. little bit. So what I like to do is I build up the lash first. And if I'm going to be doing individual lashes, it'll help me know where to place them, where I need to fill in. Today we're going to do a strip lash, just because we're going to go a little bit more dramatic. But I do the bottom lashes first, and I'm just kind of going to take the tip and just kind of lightly brush on the bottom. Because we don't want it to look really clumpy, but we want the lashes to be defined. So you just want to just take the tip and just do like a little light wispy motion. Yeah, like a hummingbird. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, for mascara. Mascara is only good three to six months. After that, toss it out. You never want to pump air into the mascara that makes it dry out. You just kind of want to wiggle your wand like that. What I like to do is to go underneath the lash and lift, over top and out, and underneath and lift. Okay? You want to make sure you wiggle it through. Are you wiggling it sideways or up and down? Kind of like this. Gotcha. Yep, like a zigzag. Now, lashes to do on yourself can be very tricky. Yes, right. Um, the easiest way to do it is to do it with tweezers. Ah, yes. To hold the lash and to make sure that the glue gets really tacky first. So that way when you pop it onto the eye, it doesn't slip and slide. Now, these are my favorite lashes. These are the Demi Wispies. They look really good on everybody. Um, again, if you don't have time for eyeshadow and you've got 10 minutes, pop on a lash real quick. Oh, and perfect. And that could be yes. a look that you could do. They're beautiful. Yeah, these are my favorites. These are the most popular. What you want to do is just kind of peel the glue. Right. And then reshape it. And then you can put it right back on the tray if you want. I had no idea. Yeah, so you could probably get like two or three uses out of the lashes. Wow. Oh, that's great to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to toss them. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna measure them to make sure that they fit. Look down. And they're a little long, so I'm gonna cut the end a little bit. Does it matter which end you cut? Or? It depends. Like if you want to keep that wispy part on the end, you can cut this side. If you want to keep that part, cut the inside. Gotcha. Okay. So I want to keep that wispy on the end, so I'm going to cut the inside. You have a lot of tools of your trade. Tweezers, scissors, yes. brushes. The, you know, like the basics. You right. probably need about five brushes. A pair of scissors, tweezers. And I'm just going to put a little glue on the band. So what do you do when you travel on the plane with your scissors? Do you have to check your luggage? Or no, they I haven't let had you? any issues with, you know, traveling with the kit. That is great. Now, um, if I remember, I like, I usually will take the scissors and just pack them in the, um, the bag that I check. Yes. Just in case, but they've definitely gotten through it without any problems. So you're using which tool? Oh, that... That, uh, just like a little spatula. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can use a Q-tip. Oh, well, that's easy. Yes. Yeah, the little um, white part in between that holds the swabs. Mm -hmm. Just kind of use that to apply it. And we just want to let it get a little tacky. So we'll let it dry a little bit. You don't want to use too much glue, but just right on the band there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're gonna look down. And you're not going to fully close the eye, because then your eyes will get glued shut, and that's not going to be a good thing. <laughs> hmm. And is it just right over the eyelashes? Right over the eyelashes. I've never watched this before, because mm -hmm. usually both of my eyes are closed. Yep. And just keep looking down. We're going to let that dry. So if you're applying it on yourself, what you're mm -hmm. going to do is you're going to hold the mirror up like this and look down and put the lash like on top. And then you're going to secure the inside and then the outside. Okay? Gotcha. Just by pushing on mm -hmm. the inside and pushing yep. on the outside. And you're going to use your tweezers to do it. Ah, gotcha. Mm -hmm. And when you're doing it on yourself, you're going to take the tweezers like here mm -hmm. and place it here, secure the inside and then the outside. Excellent. Okay? So the tweezers will let you get really close. Okay. Don't do that while you're driving. No. <laughs> <laughs> Although I probably could. Yeah, I'm sure you could. It. Yeah. <laughs> How's that lash feel? Feels great. It's I don't even feel it. Yeah. Sometimes you can feel them on, but I feel like this just I don't even notice it at yeah. all. It depends on how uh, much the glue dries. Oh. If it feels heavy, that just means that the glue is drying. Gotcha. And once it's dried, it lightens. Mm-hmm. Mm. Because the air takes some of the moisture out of it. Yeah. So do men ever get eyelashes? No. <laughs> They're really fascinated with the concealer though right now. Oh really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, after you have a TV hit, you walk back to the green room and they have makeup wipes. And the men, I would say 90% of the time, grab a makeup wipe and wipe off yeah. the foundation. <laughs> but sometimes they don't. And the Even, women never do. Yeah. <laughs> the men, it just makes them look uh, rested. Yes, yes. Yeah, a little younger, right. more tan. Um, yeah, the makeup for them just makes them look better too. Right, right, mm -hmm. right. All right, so I just adjusted the lash a little bit. Right. Now that I have the lashes on, I'm just looking at the eye in general just to see if there's anything that I need to add. Look down. And I'm just going to warm up the outer corners just a little bit. And which was the color for this one? Or was this, it a blend? This one is Fireside. Fireside, gotcha. It's like the deeper color. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
and just take our fluffy brush, which is our best friend, and just blend, blend, blend. Now, another new favorite product that I love is by It Cosmetics. It's the Bye Bye Foundation. It gives you the coverage that you want. It adds moisture, and it looks just like skin. So that's why I really, really love it. So I bought two colors because I wasn't sure which color would work. Right. I've got light, and then I've got light medium. So I'm going to just try both. And what I'm going to do is just swatch you right here on the jawline to see what matches the neck, okay? Because we want to make sure that it matches to the neck. Why is that? So that you look, won't look like you have a mask. Ah, oh, you know? yeah. Sometimes we do have to take foundation or a little bit of powder on the neck just to kind of warm it up. Right. But if we can get it as close as possible, it'll look more natural. That makes sense. Okay. So I'm going to do, let's try light. First. So light is lighter than light medium or mm -hmm. light? Okay, yeah. gotcha. And we've got light medium. Now, it's not uncommon for you to have two foundations because you might get a little color in the summer. Ah, uh, yes, we hope so. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this one is light. Let's do light. I think light medium might be a little too warm. Alright, so we're going to go with the light. And I'm going to apply this with a brush so we can get that airbrush effect. The brush is going to give you a more natural application, whereas a sponge is going to give you a lot more of a um, more full coverage look. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times the sponges are used in the green room. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's just when it's, you know, cleaning up something. Maybe yes. it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Now, I will use the sponge under the eyes just to kind of set and blend. Mm -hmm. And it has those sharp edges that I can get really close. That's what I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. But I just love this foundation so much. It's a great brush too. It's very soft. And, yes. I mean, it's, it's firm, but. Mm -hmm. This is also a blending brush. It's synthetic. You can use it dry and you can use it wet, but it's like a buffer. Um, and again, you just want to be able to kind of buff the product into the skin. This product is also a favorite for men. Oh, makeup. really? Yes because it just really hydrates them. It makes it look like skin. And when they're when the hosts are doing the shows, it seems like you all have to come in and pat them periodically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, people get shiny, they might start sweating. Ah. Um, once they get under the lights, there may, you know, maybe where the light is hitting them, there's like a hot spot. Mm. So we want to just mat that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually the studios are very cold. <laughs> very cold. <laughs> is that for the people not to sweat? For the people, or? yeah. And uh. then the cameras and the lights, all that stuff just warms everything mm. up. Wow, mm -hmm. I love I love the color and yeah. the coverage. Yeah, it's very very good. This is one of my favorite products. So I'm gonna take a sponge and I'm gonna go lightly under the eye and I'm uh. gonna use this end. And this is where I can clean up any eyeshadow fallout. And you just put it on top of it? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Like a little magic eraser. Mm-hmm. We all need that. Mm-hmm. Okay, just take a look at the difference. Oh, yeah, right. It all went away. Just clean it right up. Yeah. Now, we really want to brighten under the eyes because that what, that's what uh, creates a little lift. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use a little concealer under there, too, just to brighten up as well, but... This is just the foundation. And 
I'm just getting right here under the eyes. This is why eye cream is very important. Mm. Because once you start adding product on the, under the eye, if it looks really dry, mm -hmm. it can age you. Oh, that's good mm -hmm. to know. Is there an eye cream you recommend? Uh, Kiehl's have a, has a great one. It's like an avocado. But anything that adds moisture, anything that has a little caffeine in it that can depuff, is it will be good. Look all the way up. And that's a morning routine or evening Morning routine? and night. Oh, both. Yeah. Okay, then. Eye cream is probably one of the first anti-aging products I'd recommend for someone. Hmm. 28, going into your 30s, start using a little eye cream. Uh, it's too late. For me. <laughs> <laughs> and Never too just, late, right? <laughs> and I'm just taking a little blending brush just to blend that out a little bit. Mm -hmm. That feels nice, too. My mother always used oil of Olay. That was the thing. Yeah. It's, and I always associate that smell with her. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to take a little bit of concealer. And this is NARS's Radiance Creamy Concealer. I love using creamy under the eye. Again, because it doesn't create like this crepey look. And so I just want to use the concealer just to really brighten. So that goes on after the foundation. Yeah, I like to do it after the foundation. Just to see where I'm placing it. Oh yeah, it's kind of like pointillism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'm just going to take our fluffy brush and blend that out. Kind of go around the nose area a little bit. And you want to blend it down towards the cheek area. Now, if you don't have time to do foundation, just do concealer. Oh, that's a good concealer trick Concealer and yeah. powder. So what's your morning routine like with six kids, getting them to school, running a business, doing a podcast? Yes, well, I feel like we should talk about entrepreneurship. Uh, <laughs> You know, all of us in this room are our own entrepreneurs <laughs> yeah. of different enterprises, mm -hmm. uh, but all women making things happen in our lives. So when I have to get the kids to school, I get up as late as possible gotcha. <laughs> and I try to get the kids to school and then I come back and then do whatever my routine is. I used to try to do my routine first and mm -hmm. then get the kids to school and then I just decided it just, it's too it stressful. Working. It wasn't working. It wasn't working. <laughs> So I feel like once the kids are at school, I can come back here and then devote time. Yeah. But the, the reason I really needed this assistance from you is that I would love to hire uh, you every time I have to like go somewhere yeah. or just the daily routine or, you know, sometimes I get asked to do interviews on networks that don't provide yeah. uh, this beautiful look and you just need to be able to you know, do it yourself. Just in case. Just in case, <laughs> even though I can't do it to the same level. Yeah. Uh, but that's why I think it's so important. Mm-hmm. So now I'm going to do a little bit of powder, and this is to set the foundation. And I think this is one step that people tend to forget. They put the foundation on, and then they forget to set it with powder. And then they're wondering, why didn't my foundation last all day? It's because you forgot to set it. So we're just going to take a little bit of powder. And brush it right on top. Again, if you're pressed for time and you only have time for concealer, you can do the concealer and then do the powder on top. When you're filming, when you're doing TV, powder is important. There are different types of powders. Mm. Um, there are some powders that are going to give you more of a matte finish. There are powders that are going to give you more of like that airbrush feel. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on what kind of a look you want to do. You can also apply powder with a sponge or one of those puffs. It's going to give you more coverage. So it depends on how, you, how made up you want to look. Mm -hmm. So I like doing things with a brush because it just makes things really soft. I don't like for my clients to look super made up. Um, which is what I love about you. Yeah, I just like to have like a nice, soft look. And I always take it down to the neck a little bit. 
take a little translucent powder under the eye where we put the concealer because we just want to make sure that that is set as well. Mm. So just there. Yep, just right under there. Okay. You look awesome. I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> you are so gifted. I try. I, you know, and I'm still learning. I always make sure that I keep ahead of the trends. Right, um, right, right. So I, I watch a lot of morning TV, like Good Morning America. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like they always have good looks. Different hair, different makeup. Um, I like to try to do uh, new things. I think that makes sense. And I, would you say that the different networks have different looks? They do have different looks. So with Fox, it's a very glamorous look. Lashes, smoky eye, glossy lips. Where CNN is a little bit more of like a natural... Uh, they started doing a lot more beachy wave kind of look. Oh. And, and that's something that we're starting to incorporate too so that we can kind of have like a, a nice fresh look. So, but yeah, every network has a different look. So now I'm going to add some bronzer. On the kind of glamorous look on television. Very glamorous, yeah. It was just something that, you know, they really wanted to set the tone as far as their look. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love this. What is this? NARS Seaside. Love that. That was something you had in your drawer. Oh, thanks <laughs> to my daughter. Yes. She picks out stuff for me. Yeah. A lot of times we don't even know what we have. Right. You know, <laughs> we may get products and we're not sure exactly how to use it. Mm -hmm. But this is perfect. Just it really warms up your skin. Oh, that is a pretty color. It's very pretty. That's Seaside? Seaside by NARS. And then we're going to add a little blush. And what's the name of this one? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> NARS has these very exotic names for their for, for the product. Get your attention, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just adding it right on the apple of the cheek and brushing it up to the hairline. Now, what do you do if you feel like you've applied too much blush? I take some toilet paper and I smear. <laughs> is that not what I'm supposed to do? What you can do is you can take your powder and go over it. Oh. And that'll help diffuse it a little bit. That makes sense. So we're just gonna go right over it. Yeah, the toilet paper smear is not. Not working. No, it doesn't. <laughs> now, for TV, what you wanna do is you wanna add a little bit more blush than normal if you're doing any type of video. Because the camera's going to diffuse a lot of what we're doing here. So that's why I tend to go heavier on the eyes than normal, um, a little deeper on the lip, because how it reads on camera is going to be totally different. Mm -hmm. And I really like the glossy lip, too. Mm -hmm. it makes it really useful. Yeah, it does. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add on some lips. Um, one other thing I want to do is I want to add a little liner on the top of your lash. And I am going to you could do a couple of different things. You can use eyeshadow, hmm. which I think is what I'm going to use. I'm going to do that. I'm going to wet our brush a little bit with a little bit of setting spray. So that when I dip my brush in the shadow, It'll pick up a little bit better. And is this on top of the wispy or a little bit? Yep, just right at the lash line. Gotcha. Just smudge that a little bit. Now, how do you do it? It's, it seems very straight. Is it just practice? So what or? I like to do is I like to go to the middle, mm -hmm. go to the end, go to the inside, and meet the middle. Ah, that makes yeah. sense. Don't try to go all the way across. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but yeah, just do it halfway. halfway. To the middle, to the out, to the inside, to the middle. Gotcha. Okay? That makes it easier. That way you're not committed to having right. a straight line. <laughs> so I feel like I'll start sometimes on the inside and it'll just go, Ooh. Yes. And we're going to do a liner and a gloss. This is by Makeup Forever. And this is their Aqua Lips, so it's a little waterproof, which I love. And I'm just 
following your natural lip line. And on the top, I'm going kind of a little bit more above. Mm -hmm. So settle a question for me. Mm -hmm. Are you supposed to have your mouth open when you do this or closed? Because different people tell me different things. Doesn't matter. Whatever's easiest for you as far as following your natural uh -huh. lip line. Gotcha. I also take the lip liner inside the lip too. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. It'll help the uh, lips stay longer. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to wear a lipstick, you will put the lipstick right on top of it. Gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha, gotcha. Alright, smudge your lips for me. Yep. Mm, I love this color. Mm -hmm. So most of the color is from the liner. Ah. And the gloss is just adding that shine. And smudge. Oh, that's fascinating. The color is from the liner. From the liner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Liner and just throw on some clear gloss or whatever chapstick you might have. You've got Perfect. Alright, so now I'm going to set your makeup with a little setting spray. And again, that'll just help everything stay in place. If you want to add a little bit more va va voo to your lashes, I'm going to add some mascara. The same motion as mm -hmm. before. Just wiggle it through. Oh, we should have did it before and after. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Cindy, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Bought this makeup mirror on Amazon, and you know how you can never really tell the size of things. Yeah. I thought it would be a lot bigger. Oh, <laughs> gotcha. Even though it had the dimensions, but. Mm -hmm. This is still good, though. It's something that you can travel with, for sure. Yeah, I do like that. It breaks down, so. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look up for me. I love how I can recognize myself, but I'm the best me. Yeah. It's not a total transformation, it's an enhancement. Yes, yes. <laughs> and look down for me. A little mascara here. So another thing that I'm gonna do, now I'm getting really fancy. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm gonna take a little bit of concealer and go under your brow. Your brow a bit. Mm. If you ever make a mistake in your makeup, just take a little bit of concealer and clean things up. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So that is our look. That is your camera ready look. <laughs> this is yours too. This is brush cleaner. Oh, great. So in, if you're in between washing it with soap and water, right. you can just spray the brushes with a paper towel and it'll get it clean instantly. Excellent. Okay. So that is yours. Fabulous. This is also yours. This is a really good travel case. Oh, yay! You can find this on Amazon, and I probably have about four of these. I use one for male grooming. I have a, per a lot of personal clients that I do that I have one for each person. But it's so good to travel with because you've got the little slots here where you can put brushes or products. You've got this little pocket in here, and then these little inserts come in and out. So you can adjust it to fit whatever palettes that you want. So. So easy to travel with. Take it through the airport, TSA approved. So I love it. Yeah, yeah, I got it from Amazon, and it's pretty sturdy too. It looks sturdy. So, for the hair, we're just gonna add some uh, volume and curls. And I got you a larger size curling iron because again, we don't want ringlets. We just want like a nice body wave. Right, because okay. I'm not Shirley Temple. Yes. <laughs> And then on TV, they tend to look like two little logs on the sides. Oh, of the hair, yes, right. Um, which really dates the look. So right. I'm just going to make sure the hair is dry. And this is something that you can do 
easily. I think it's just all about the products that you're using. Oh, I did purchase that Oribe yes, dry from dry spray. the Fox makeup. Okay, perfect. Green room. Um, I mean, not from you all, but <laughs> because I saw it there. So I bought it, but I don't think I've ever used it. So. Yeah, we use a lot of Orbe products. This product too, I'm gonna leave with you. It's a volumizer, extra boost. We wanna spray that in the root when we're blow drying the hair, and that'll mm -hmm. just kind of give it some lift. And if they can guess who my favorite angel was. Well, I, I've seen bits and pieces of the old one. I can't right. remember because I think it was a little bit before. Yeah, you're much I younger. I the movies. <laughs> oh, right, right. I have not seen the movies, but there's a new one uh, that yeah, I guess they just did. TV too? We do. No, check the flyaways. Ah. Oh, well, and some of the hosts are younger guys. Mm -hmm. So I think they are more into yeah. a certain look. Yeah, really I'm thinking of someone in particular, but I won't say his name. Yeah. <laughs> you know who I'm talking about, right? Uh -huh. From the weekend? Yes. Yes, yes. 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 <laughs> Probably Brit Hume is not as concerned about how his no. hair looks. <laughs> he just wants to look bronze. Right, right, right. So this is where we want to get a lot of the volume. So we want to over the rest of here. Mm. So it's forward and up. So most artists I have found, or correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of them will do makeup or hair, but they won't do both. Yeah, we're unicorns. <laughs> right? It's like multiple skill set. Yeah. Well, to work in TV in DC, you have to know how to do both. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. So most people who work in TV can do both. So that you're always able to to Switch do whatever off. needs yeah, to be done. Yeah, we get yeah. really busy, so we just need to be able to hop from, you know, person to person. And how do people deal with the stress of that? Because sometimes you have 45 minutes to get somebody ready for a hit, and sometimes I've been in there where I literally, they have seven minutes to do my hair and make, seven, yeah. before I have to go on. And because I don't wear any makeup, usually, yeah, but that's, that's going to change. <laughs> yes. 
And actually, that's true too. When people come in with makeup, can mm -hmm. you just go right on top of what they have? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. And it helps for them to already have something. Yeah. Does anybody have bad enough makeup? You have to take it all off and start from scratch. Um, if we have time. Ah. Uh, if we don't have time, we've got to just kind of rock with what we got. So if you don't have time to wash your hair, mm -hmm. this dry shampoo is really good. And it adds volume. And it just goes on the top? You just want to spray, spray it kind of like in the roots. Ah, oh, gotcha. Yeah, My new curling iron. Mm -hmm. So how do stars on your shows who are constantly getting their hair done mm -hmm. protect their hair? It's a challenge. <laughs> um, we try to build the hair in stages, so not washing the hair every day, making sure we're using heat protectant, not mm -hmm. doing a lot of teasing. Mm -hmm. Got to get away from the teasing because a lot of them get their hair colored, so it's just a lot of wear and tear in the hair. Right. And um, just making sure that you get the ends trimmed, you know, that sort of thing. So I kind of like to build it in stages. So day one hair would be, okay, they just washed it. Day two, um, I'll try to style it with whatever product is in it. You know, we have a lot of different styles that we can do. But it's definitely a challenge. So they're not washing their hair every day? Not every day. Mm -hmm. Try not to. Um, we have some people that would do clip-ins or halos where we can just style the extension and not necessarily the hair. Oh. So that's an option for people. And can you wash the extensions? Yeah, or you... you can. Oh. Yeah, hmm. it's like human hair. So you wash it and condition it just like you would, you know. Wow. Hair. Yeah, I've heard people in the green room talking about having extensions. Yeah. And does anybody wear wigs or everybody has Don't natural hair? Don't a lot of wigs. Women of color will wear wigs, because again, for us, it's the same thing. We have to put a lot of heat and things on the hair. Right. Um, so, you know, a wig might be a good option, or extensions. I think Dolly Parton always wore wigs. Did she? Yeah. The thing about wigs is you gotta get a good one. Right, <laughs> right, right. So it doesn't look really wiggy. So when you're curling your hair, you want to make sure, especially in the front, you're curling away from the face. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Ah. So yeah, curl away Something from right the face. there. I always <laughs> curl in. Yeah, curl away from the face. Yeah, that was a great tip you gave me to get the long layers mm -hmm. because I've almost my whole life had relatively long hair. But, you know, you get it tailored a little bit in the back. Yeah. But to have the long layers in the front, mm -hmm. that makes a big difference. Because it gives it a style, and it's easier to curl the hair and have it look like a style. Right, right, right. With, the, uh, with long hair without layers, it just the hair can get really limp. Yeah, and some of the ladies on the shows have very long hair, mm -hmm. uh, but it seems like most of the hosts don't. Yeah, and if they do have really long hair, it could be extensions. Aha! <laughs> Inside information. Mm -hmm. Could be extensions. So is that something you would recommend I look into, or do, do I have enough no, hair? I think that... you got enough hair. Good. Good, good, great. I think keeping the layers and then keeping um, the color in it will help style it. That was something I was surprised to learn. I had never colored, colored my hair before, mm -hmm. and I didn't realize that coloring your hair makes it easier to style. Yeah, because it just makes it, um, I hate to use the word ragged, but. Right, textured. It, just, it adds some <laughs> texture to it, yeah. Yeah. Your hair is like a baby fine <laughs> hair, and so. 
Um, adding some color in it will um, keep it from having the little static and the flyaways. When I was getting married, we were getting married in D.C. in the hot, humid month of August. Mm. And I really wanted my hair to be curly and not just flat and limp. Mm -hmm. And so I went and got my first perm ever in oh, my wow. life, which is not a great thing to do a couple weeks before yeah. you get married. <laughs> but it seemed like a good idea at the time. And it worked. But it was funny because my wedding pictures, my hair doesn't look like how I've had my hair the rest of my life. Right. So a little you strange. Didn't look like but yourself. not exactly. Gotcha. <laughs> But that's what weddings are for. Do you do a lot of weddings too? I do a lot. I do about 40 to 50 weddings a year. 40 to 50, man, you're working. Yeah. Uh, Saturday was my last wedding until January. I have one in Cancun. Wow. And then my next one is in March. So they fly you to Cancun. Mm -hmm. And do you just do the bride? or? I normally do the bridal party. And then depending wow. on how many people. Uh, so for this one, I'll have to take up an assistant because there are eight people. Wow. Eight people for makeup. So that's a, wouldn't be able to do everybody myself. So will you get to have a fruity drink on the beach in Cancun? Yes, I as usually a reward? Will build in like a day or two. Smart. <laughs> for myself. So how do you pick your assistant? It's usually somebody that I know that can do both mm -hmm. hair and makeup, just in the event, if we have to do hair. Um, somebody who normally has the same aesthetic as I do. Oh, true. Yeah. And generally the people that you're, um, you're doing the weddings for, are they clients, regular clients, or have they just found you? Some people have found me online, um, a lot of people through Google. Mm. And then this particular bride, she was in a wedding that I did two years ago. She was a bridesmaid. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. So when she got engaged, she reached out to me. I think I was the first vendor she booked. Wow. She hadn't even found us. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think she had picked the location yet. <laughs> really? Wow. Yeah. So you agreed before you knew. So is this, do you do that regularly, have to go to locations, or is it, is that pretty rare? What's that? Going international travel for um, a wedding. A lot of brides are doing the international thing now because they think that it'll cut back on guest list and cost. Oh, so they do that on purpose. Yeah, destination uh, weddings, yeah. I never realized that the, maybe the impetus behind that was to cut down on the guest list. Yeah. <laughs> What? I thought they expected everybody to come. What? This particular bride is having 150 people. So I'm thinking everybody was like, wow. Yeah, you can't come. Let's do it. So she picked a good place. <laughs> <laughs> I never knew that before. Mm -hmm. mm. You have all the secrets. All the secrets. <laughs> the makeup room has all the secrets. Yes, it does. It's the most comfortable place for people to be in. Right. People can be themselves, you know, you socialize with your friends. That's definitely true. I feel like it's very chummy and there's a lot of camaraderie. There is. And you start to see the same people over and over and mm -hmm. over again. And then you learn a little bit about their lives. Yeah. Uh, and people across the aisle, like both sides of the yeah. aisle. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it's fascinating because the conversations that they have in there, sometimes you think, oh, if you can tape this. Yes. <laughs> This will really jack the ratings. <laughs> now, as I'm getting to the top, I'm going to add a little bit more hairspray because I want this part to hold. And again, I'm just curling away from the face. So it's that way mm -hmm. on this side. That makes sense. Yep. You also post a lot of inspirational quotes on your Instagram. Is that how you motivate yourself? Or are you just trying to share with others? It's how I motivate myself, and I feel like it's always good to share with others too, you know? Mm -hmm. It's hard being an entrepreneur and a mom, you know? It's, it's hard. So I like to share you know, encouraging things with people. Amen. 
But I'm grateful because being an entrepreneur allows me to do more things with my kids. Right, right, right. Well, it, it has been shown that more women are starting businesses. Yeah. I feel like it's the only way you can manage it all. Right, right, right. These days you have to be raising your kids. <laughs> well, and then you're not as you're not a subject to, I mean, you have to answer your client's demands. Like yes. me, I'm a very demanding client. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you do have a little more ability to regulate. Yes, you do. I like having the option of working in TV and network, having my businesses. At any time, I feel like, oh, if TV ever got to be too much, I'd have something else I could do, you know? Right. I don't feel so... Um, Obligated. Right, right. You, you have choose. you have diversified your yes. income streams, mm -hmm. and I think that's very important for women because you you can get caught in the riptide. Yeah. You know, oh, you know, should I go to my kids' field trip or am I gonna alienate mom? You know, that's right, kind of thing. right, right. I don't think twice about it. The FaceTime, mm -hmm. we have to be here even when we're not doing stuff. Yeah, it's very frustrating. Do you work for other networks too, or did you previously no, work for other networks? I did networks? previously. So previously I worked for CNN, um, and then when I took a job with Fox, um, you know, I had to, you can't work for any other competing networks. That makes sense. So, um, but yeah, at any point where I felt like I wanted to go back to being a freelancer, I could go and work for other networks as well. And would you say the group of makeup artists in the, the district of Columbia, Maryland, Virginia are pretty, they know each other pretty well. Yeah, and it's are a supportive. very small, very small community, especially those who work in TV. Ah, uh, yes. Very small. And then you have the wedding makeup artists who just do weddings. So there's so much happening here in DC. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, it's, it does seem like a lot of the Fox shows have sh switched down to DC too. Yes. That were previously, like Tucker Carlson's show. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of the other ones, Laura's show, obviously. Yeah. So that increases the demand for artists mm -hmm. in D.C. The election is coming up, so we're going to... Oh, yeah, what are you thinking crazy. about that? Oh, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> busy, busy. Busy, right? Busy. I won't have any life for about a year. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, it already, it's already kind of started. It started early this year for some, I mean, this time around. I sense that as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, things have been really busy since the last presidential election. Seems yeah. like more so there wasn't really as much of a cliff yeah. in coverage or news stories, and I think that will only ratchet up, yeah. ramp up. So what I like to do is I like to pull the hair forward. Well, it's interesting, too, because when you go on TV, you have, like I have here, you have a mic, mm -hmm. and you can't have the hair covering the mic yes. because it messes, it distorts the sound. Yeah. So that is something you have to take into account. I'm going to tease you here a little bit. So why do brides like updos so much? Um, because they don't want the, to deal with the hair. Uh, yeah. Okay, gotcha. It just looks it's set. It's out of the way. It's set. They can dance all night. <laughs> oh, true. Don't have to worry about putting in a ponytail. So do you ever attend any of the weddings or you do your... If I'm really close with the bride, but I try uh, not to. Right? Because that would make <laughs> it... a long day. Right. But I do have some clients who want full day service. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is um, we'll do touch-ups before the reception. You have a lot of brides who are doing second dresses now, so they want like another oh look. God. Why? It's a full-on production. Why? So I'm just teasing the front to give us some volume here.
And how do you judge how much product is appropriate? I don't like using a lot of product in the hair. Ah. Um, you don't want the hair to feel crunchy. Right, right, right. So you err on the wet. side of less. Yeah, less is more. Um, we'll do like a nice spray at the end just to lock it in. Mm -hmm. But usually I like to get the hairstyle at least one more day. And if we do a lot of hairspray, then yes, we can't, right, know? right, right. So I will build it in stages. It depends on which day I'm working with. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so I'm going to have you turn your body a little bit. Look in the mirror. Amazing, wow. It's such a change for me running around with my hair in a ponytail. Yeah. <laughs> Which is fine if that's the kind of day you're having. You yes. Know? Oh, that's most days. So this is a new hairspray that I picked up today. Um, it's a thermal spray for colored hair. So I'm going to try this and see how this works because most of my clients color their hair. And it's a medium hold. Mm-hmm. And then Kenra also has this um, hairspray that doesn't have alcohol in it. So I'm going to try to see how that works too. Why does some have alcohol in it? It's the hold. That's what makes a hairspray a hairspray. Oh, I didn't but know that. But if your hair is colored and we are styling it every day, the alcohol can dry out the hair. Right, that makes sense. So I'm always looking for products. Wow. So I'm just going to kind of go in and just zhuzh it up a little bit. It's like a lion. <laughs> Got my mane. So yeah, see how we have like a nice little body wave here yes, at the bottom? Yes, yes. We don't want the ringlets. Yeah, it, it is. It kind of expands, mm -hmm. but it's wavy. And yeah. So if the wind gets a hold of this hair, I'm okay with it because it'll just have like a nice little movement to it. Right, right, right. When you go out, you may want to take like a little can of hairspray just in case. Excellent. But if not, you can, you know, tuck this behind the ear for another look if you want. That always looks really nice. Very girl next door, but, you know, polished. Oh, I love the girl next yeah. door. Yeah. I love that look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just a nice little wave, but not a ringlet. Okay, you are camera ready. Amazing. <laughs> I feel fabulous. Thank you so much, Renata. Yeah. So this iron goes up to, I think this one goes up to 430. You don't have to turn it all the way up. It depends on how you want the curls to hold. Um, so this is the little knob that adjusts it. Mm -hmm. But this is a ceramic iron, so it also has like a heat protectant in it. And it'll also smooth the hair too. So Excellent. So what temperature do you recommend? Uh, probably here at 28 or 35. Gotcha. Yeah, you don't have to go all the, I think this goes up to 450. You don't have to go all the way up. And then the bigger barrel just gives you like a looser body weight curl. Yeah. This is your round brush. I'm going to leave this here. You've got your dry texture spray. This is your volumizer. So what you want to do is while the hair is wet, before you blow dry it, just spray this in the root just to kind of give it some extra body. Okay. Excellent. And Goodies. Then, um, I'm going to leave this with you too because this has a little bit of a hold to it. So yeah, those will be your three products that you use with your round brush. The only other thing that you'll need to get is like some claw clips so that when you're drying your hair, yes, you can separate hold the hair. It out. Yeah, you can hold the hair up. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you normally just let your hair air dry? Yes, I do. Okay, yeah, then that's fine. <laughs> Not all the time, but, yeah, you know. that's fine, because your hair dries pretty straight. Yeah, oh, yeah, um, yeah. So you can also let it air dry if you have the time to do that. But if you're in a pinch, you've just washed your hair and you need to use the blow dryer, right. use the, um, the round brush just to kind of lift up the hair. Excellent. Okay, and what you can do is just kind of use it here to, like, right. lift up the root. Don't necessarily go into like a tank because you, you might get tangled. Right, right, right. A right, professional. Right. <laughs> yes. I look totally different. I mean, I look like myself, but I look so Great. put together. Yeah. I'm so amazed. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's do you feel confident? I do. Yeah. I do. And that's the thing too. Makeup is, it's not to cover up who you are. 
it's just to really enhance what you already have. And that's I what it's about. That. It's giving you that confidence so that you can get in front of a camera or in front of an audience if you're doing speaking engagements. Right. And really present your best self. So that's why I love doing makeup. It's just enhancing your, your best moments. So did we record that? Or? <laughs> OK, good, good, good. I want to make sure that was so yeah. wonderful. <laughs> Um, and so to find me, people can find me on Instagram at Renata Lynette Beauty. I do, I do classes as well. So if people are interested in taking a class and learning how to create a look, um, I do classes. I do one-on-ones. Um, I have a lot of people who like to get a few girlfriends together for, you know, three other girlfriends and you can do like a class, you know, oh, together. Oh, fun. That's, I that's love that. Fun. Yes. So I think, you know, I like to tell people your makeup and your hair person is like your gynecologist or your dentist. You got to have a team of people, right? Yes, right? absolutely. <laughs> and you are my team and yeah, you are you my people. <laughs> no doubt. Here's all of your